again we are back in our series the manifestation of God in men we spoke the last time with uh, brother EE e. yes. brother Emmanuel Ekong I'll repeat again he likes to be called brother EE e. yes. I greet you sir uh, thank you thank you for having me God bless well we're gonna go back to our same series we were talking mm -hmm. about can God be a man so the manifestation of God in men mm -hmm. we have a question that was unanswered from the last episode and because the audience had requested that it should be answered we want to treat it there's two separate promises that Christ made to his disciples and one promise he told them that they should tarry in Jerusalem till they will be endowed with the power of the Holy Ghost on a separate front he told them that the Holy Spirit will come in the last days to come to teach. Unfortunately, Christendom did not, does not understand and cannot separate these two separate promises. That's what we want to talk about today. We will take our first reference from Luke chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. And this is what happened. The disciples of Christ had gone out to preach. They tried to heal. When they would pray for the sick, the sickness still remained. They tried to cast demons, and the demons did not listen to them. So at a set point, they approached the master and said, Master, increase our faith. They wanted their faith in Christ to be increased, so that they will be able to do the wonderful works of Christ as they were asked to do. And Christ posed a parable to them that we are going to read in Luke 17 from verses 5 to 10 in just one second. Christ said to them, Which one of you that would have a servant, and that servant having worked from morning till evening, when the master will return in the evening, which one of you will say to the servant, uh, go and prepare food and eat first. After you, you finish eating. Then you come and prepare food for the master. He said, I don't think so. He said, it did not matter how hard your servant worked from morning till evening. Whenever the master will come back in the evening, the master will sit at the table and ask that same servant to feed him first. That after the master would have been fed full, then will the servant eat. It was a parable. He then made them to understand that he, the Christ, is the master. He has to eat full first. That after he, the Christ, has been fed full, he will then remember the servants. He was talking in parables saying, when he would have been crucified, when he would have been glorified, then the same power that is in him, he will then give that power unto his disciples. Let's hear the reference. In Luke 17, verses 5 to 10, please. Our reference is taken from the book of St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. Mm -hmm. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, mm -hmm. ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. But which of you having a servant plowing on feeding cattle will mm -hmm. say unto him by mm -hmm. and by, yes. when he is come from the field, mm -hmm. go and sit down to meet, mm -hmm. and will not rather say unto him, mm -hmm. make ready where with I may sup, yes. and gird thyself and, and serve, serve me. me. Till I, I have, have eaten, eaten and, and drunk him. Afterward, you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> and afterward, thou shalt eat and yes. drink. Mm -hmm. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? No. Nope. 
I trow not. I think not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which yes. are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have, have done, done that which was our duty to, to, do. Do, to do. Exactly. May the Lord bless his holy word. Amen. When you would have done all these things, Christ said, say to yourself, you are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. We don't add, we don't subtract. So, the disciples asked for Christ to increase their faith. He promised them that after he, Christ, would be crucified, glorified, he will then give them this reward by giving them the power, the power of the Holy Ghost to do the works which they desire to do in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He made this promise and he continued by telling them that this will come to pass only after he has been crucified. Let us hear Luke chapter 24, verse 49 as he made this promise and reaffirmed to them again that the power will be sent to them in Jerusalem. Read. Uh, reference is taken from St. Luke chapter 24, verse mm -hmm. 49. Yes. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, mm -hmm. but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until yes. ye be endued with power from on high. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Now you see in Luke 24, this is now after he has been crucified. He has resurrected. He sent a message that the disciples should tarry in Jerusalem. Remember first, they made a request and asked him to increase their faith. Now is the program of responding to that request made by the disciples. After now he has resurrected, he sent this message through the women, said, go and tell the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they will be endowed with the power, the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what happened on the day of Pentecost. Let us read Acts of Apostles. Our reference is taken from chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 from Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verses 6 to, to eight. 8. Yes. When they therefore were come together, mm -hmm. they asked of him, saying, mm -hmm. Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power. Yes. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. you. hear that? And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both exactly. in Jerusalem and in all Judea exactly. and in Samaria, mm -hmm. and unto the utmost parts of the earth. Exactly. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. In the answer to the specific request that the disciples made, Lord, increase our faith. Now he told them that they will be given power. The power of the Holy Ghost shall come upon them, causing them to bear witness of him and his works in all Judea and to the uttermost part of the earth. You see the promise? The promise of the Holy Ghost. Now we are approaching the fulfillment. This promise must be separated from what he gave to John about the Holy Spirit coming in the last days to execute judgment upon humanity in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, your grace, yes, I please. mean, I wanted to get this a little bit straight yes. because there's a lot of confusion out there mm -hmm. in the Christendom. Yes. What's the difference between the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. It's the same God. He gives different attributes to himself. God is called love. God is called wisdom. God is called power, all from the same one God. The Holy Ghost that he promised the disciples, it's with a reference to a specific event that will take place, a power, the power of, the, of God given to the disciples to bear witness. If you remember, John the Baptist was born with this power. His parents, Elizabeth and Zacharias, they both, 
have the same Holy Ghost. It is in the scriptures that God delineates what he will do now, what he will do next, but we must follow. Both are God, or they're not really like it's different. The Holy Ghost that was sent unto the disciples was a spirit. It did not personify. The Holy Spirit that Christ promised the disciples of necessity must personify in order to carry out those specific works. And we are going to read about it. Can we see Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, so that we see the Holy Ghost as it came down upon the disciples? Go ahead. Our reference is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Mm -hmm. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, yes. they were all in one, with one accord in one place. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Mm -hmm. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Yes. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Mm -hmm. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and began to speak with other tongues yes. as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. See? May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. This is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There is not a difference per se between Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit. It's nomenclature. So God says, I'm going to pour my spirit upon you. He calls it Holy Ghost. It is still the spirit of God. But this must be separated from this separate promise that was given to, to John, the divine, saying that another comforter will come. And this comforter, he specifically called him the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the comforter. And then he said, these will be the duties when he will arrive. He will teach the world. He will reprove the world of sin, demonstrate righteousness, and judge the world in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this promise of the Holy Spirit being poured upon disciples fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And he said that this promise is for them and for their children, children's children until judgment day. Can you explain to us yes. what is the day of Pentecost? It was a day set aside when the brethren gathered together that after the Christ had, Christ had resurrected. Okay? They came together to pray. And on this particular day, the Father pours his spirit upon them. On that day, suddenly, as we have just heard in Acts chapter 2, it appeared like glowing tongues of fire, just like we find in our Bethels in our worshiping places. In Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, we actually have the Easter Monday that is set aside for this purpose, specifically when the Father pours the Holy Spirit upon all creation, upon his children. And the eyes of his children will be, see, will be opened. Some will see Abraham. Some will see Moses. Some will see Elijah. Some will see our Lord as, he, as it, it, it appeals to our Father. So on the day of Pentecost, this is what happened. God pours the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. Okay. That's the specific meaning of it. Now we want to fast forward to a different promise that Christ made to his disciples. Two separate and distinct promises were made using the same word, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And it is so important that every Christian, every believer understand this, the separate promises. One promise the disciple asked him, increase our faith. Mm -hmm. He told them that he will do so at the fullness of time. Mm -hmm. After he resurrected, he said to them, go and wait in Jerusalem till you should be endowed with this power of the Holy Spirit. And that took place on the day of Pentecost. That was the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It would not make a difference if you call it Holy Ghost, if you call it Holy Spirit. But the word is important to separate the two, the two incidences. One was to take place on the day of Pentecost, and it did. Okay. Now, let's go to the other promise, which he made, and he chose one disciple to give him this promise, John only. 
This promise was not given to Matthew. It was not given to Mark or to Luke or to Simon Peter. No, John was a choice. The beloved disciples. Yes, let's go to John. John 16. Mm. Our reference is taken from the book of John, mm -hmm. chapter 16. John 16, verses 7 to 9. Our reference is taken from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Yes. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Yes. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Mm -hmm. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin mm -hmm. and of righteousness and of judgment. Mm -hmm. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Mm -hmm. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, yes. and ye see me no more. Mm -hmm. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. With Amen. John 16, verses 12 to 14, so that you will hear and begin to listen to him. This is Christ speaking about his second coming. What happened on the day of Pentecost was not second coming of Christ. This is Christ now speaking, and he chose one disciple to speak on this subject concerning his blessed return into the world. And it must not be confused with what took place on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured upon the disciples to enable them, to give them what it takes to bear witness and do the works of Christ, which they did. On a separate promise, Christ called John and said, John, write, the time will come that the Comforter will come. When he will come, these are the things he will do. He will reprove the wall of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. It is the Comforter that is to come that will judge the world. These two promises must be separated because indeed they are different. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Read John 16, 12 through 14. Our reference is taken from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 13, 14. 14. Yes. I have yet many things to say unto you, mm -hmm. but ye cannot bear them now. Mm -hmm. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? See that? It is a he. He's called a he. He's called the spirit of truth. He's called the comforter. And all of these are attributes. Just as when Christ was going to come before in the first coming, we were being told he is the wonderful one. He is the everlasting father. He is the mighty God, the counselor. His attributes is to show that this is not an ordinary entity coming into the world. This is the Godhead. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Read. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, yes. he will guide you in all truth, mm -hmm. for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, mm -hmm. and he will show you things to come. Yes. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall, and shall show it, show it to unto me. Exactly. So if you notice... He told the disciples, when the Comforter will come, he shall not speak about himself. And if you go to John chapter 5, verse 30, you will see, Christ himself said it about himself. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. The Comforter that will come, will come and repeat the exact same thing that Christ did. So who is this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God would only speak 2,000 years ago in parables. And without parable, he would not speak. How be it when he is come, he shall teach you, he shall guide you, he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. In John 13, before Christ left, he called the disciples. He said to them, 
from now on, I no longer call you my servants, because a servant does not know what the master knows. But everything I have received of my father, I have given it to you. Therefore, I call you my friends. He said, whatever I have received of my father, I have given it unto you. But notice here, he says, when the comforter will come, the comforter shall receive and give to you. Do you see similarities? Can you not see similarities in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Yes? Go ahead. Read. John chapter 14, from verse 18 through 26. Our reference is taken from the book of John chapter 14. So who do you think the comforter is? Let me even ask the question to the audience. You read the Bible, but you don't understand your Bible. Who do you think the comforter is? Read. The answer is there in verse 18. John chapter 14. Our reference is taken from the book of St. John chapter 14, verse 18 through 26. To 26. Yes. I will not leave you comfortless. Uh -huh. I'll come to you. Who will come to you? Yet. Who will come to us? Himself. You have to listen to him when he speaks. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So he is the comforter. But this is how he will speak concerning his return, concerning his second coming, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Read. Yes, a little while, mm -hmm. and the world seeth me no more. Mm -hmm. But ye see me, because I live, mm -hmm. ye sh shall live also. Yes. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, mm -hmm. and ye in me, and I in you. Yes. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. Mm -hmm. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I'll love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judah saith unto him, Not Iscariot, yes. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, yeah, and not unto the world? Manifestation, right? mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, yes. he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode in him. Mm -hmm. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. Yes. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the comforter. But the comforter. Who is this comforter? Which is the Holy Ghost. Yes, see? Who but the, the comforter who is the Holy Ghost. Now it's definitive. But the comforter, his official office is comforter. Another name for him is Holy Ghost. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. When Christ came into the world 2,000 years ago, he fulfilled the Son component of the Trinity. As Christ returns into the world a second time, he fulfills the Holy Ghost component of the Trinity. Does it make sense? Can you repeat it again? We shall do it. Please. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. One God. As Christ Jesus came into the world 2,000 years ago, he fulfilled the Son component of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. The Son of God. That's who he was. And that is his title. As that same Christ returns into the world a second time, the last time, he now is fulfilling the Holy Ghost component of the Trinity. So his official title, his official office in the Trinity is Holy Ghost. Now the parable is revealed. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the third person, the last person, the last one to come. That's why when Christ spoke, he spoke in parables. Remember when he made a statement and said, Every sin you commit against the Son of Man will be forgiven you. But the sin, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, shall not be forgiven, neither in this generation nor in any other one. Why? Because it is the Holy Ghost that will judge you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Please continue. 
verse 26. Yes. But the comforter, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Ghost, yes. whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. he shall teach you all things. He's a teacher. Stop right there for a second. So that the audience will follow us. When the prophecy was given that God will come into the world, what was the first duty that he was supposed to carry out in the world? You've just read it. But the comforter, whom the Father will send in my name, he, he said he, he shall teach you all things and bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Between when our Lord Jesus Christ came into the world and when the comforter arrived, humanity will go into the works of God and damage the work of God, create all manners of sacrileges all over the whole place. They add and subtract from the scriptures as they like, as you have seen. But it does not affect God because when the comforter comes, the comforter arrives with the scriptures complete. Are you following? And this is exactly what happened 2,000 years ago. When we had at that time the different religious groups teaching all manners of teachings, we had like the scribes, for instance, like we had the Sadducees, we had the publicans, we had the different religious groups in Israel, the zealots, and they were teaching all manners of things. Eventually, the Christ came from heaven onto the earth. As Christ arrived on the earth, he does not need to read the Bible. The Bible is inside of him. He is the writer of the Bible. Are you following? Yes. So if someone goes to university, you can know he's not the one. He does not need to go to any university, to go to any school or any church or anything whatsoever. He arrives complete in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read John 7, verse 15, before you read this reference. So you can see that the works is similar. It's exactly what he did before that he does again. And no human being can do this. Every man on this earth has to go to school to learn. You and I have to go to school to learn. Yes. The audience have to go to school to learn. But this one does not need to go to school to learn. Even Paul wrote about him. He says, there are different manners of priests. Some priests will go to school, the ordinances of men. They will study, they graduate, they are being made pastors. That is a priest after the ordinances of human beings. He said, but there is one order of priesthood that is made by the power of endless life. That's where the Christ comes from. As Christ arrives in the world, he does not need any of the, he arrives with the entire Bible inside of him. And he, expo, he is the one to expose the scriptures. If you remember, as you are going to read now, when Christ went into the temple, he took the book of Isaiah, the scroll from their hands, and he quietly opened into the book. He read before them, and he told them that this prophecy that you've been reading all these years has fulfilled. Nobody could understand what he was talking about. When did it fulfill? How did it fulfill? Yes, it has fulfilled. But they became troubled. How does this Christ know so much, having never been to school? Because they knew they have not seen him in classroom. You know, read John chapter 7, verse 15. Our reference is taken from... Uh, John the seven. book of John chapter 7 verse, verse 15. 15 yes and the Jews marvel saying mm -hmm. how knoweth this man let us having never learned exactly may the Lord bless his holy word amen. amen so they marveled they said how does this man Jesus know so much we know he hasn't been to school of course if he was in school we would have seen him in our classroom right yes <laughs> today the leader of brotherhood arrives upon the earth to fulfill this scripture. And prophetically, he does not need to go to any school. He has never been to any school. Neither has he been to any church or any court or anything whatsoever. He arrives with the scriptures complete in him. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We shall continue this episode. Yes, we want to also know you that is teaching the yes. audience. Mm -hmm. From your rank, yes. I know that you're an archbishop, a higher position in the <laughs> kingdom. We want to know also, did you go to school for that? Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Thank you, we Father. We shall be back. Thank you, Father. More. Thanks for watching.
Oh, no. 